<laughs> Hello, I'm Pauline Larson, and this is Mr. Petey. Yeah, Petey and the Mister. All right. Today we're going to talk about honoring your father and your mother, and that's real important. In fact, it's part of the Ten Commandments. We've been learning about the Ten Commandments, and this is one of them. So, are you ready to read the memory verse? Yes, I was born ready. Okay, let's go ahead. And, you ready? Yeah. What does it say? Mm, honor your father and your mother. Oh. So where's that found? Up there. I know it's found up there. We're in the Bible. Mm, Deuteronomy 5, 16. That's right. So, you honor your father and your mother? Yeah, I, I had a great mother. What about your daddy? Well, I didn't really know him. No, but you had a good daddy. I tell you what, I had a mom and dad, and my, I um, it's been a long time ago since I've seen them. They've gone to be with Jesus, but anyway, and they were good parents. They really were, and so if you have great parents, just enjoy them and honor them because you don't have them forever. But we have our heavenly Father, and He's the best daddy ever. There is not a better daddy than our heavenly Father. All right, let's go on here and. We're going to do our PowerPoint. You want to do that? Yeah, sure. That's the same thing. Honor your father and mother. That's right. Honor your father and mother. That is our theme. That's what we're going to be talking about today. All right. Now we're going to go over the four things that we learn about God. We can do it every week. Mm. Can you tell me what number one is? Mm. God loves me. God loves me and he loves you. Oh, isn't that wonderful? You know, sometimes people don't feel loved. And there may be people who should love you and who don't. I mean, that's awful to admit, but it's true. But God loves you. And you know what? We love you too. So, yeah. All right, what's number two? Mm, I have sin. Yeah. I have sin. Oh, I don't like to talk about that. So what sort of things you do that are wrong? Mm. <laughs> well, I go places I shouldn't. Yeah, I know you do. You get up on the table when you're not supposed to. Well, I like the table. I know you like the table. Well, I think cats have rights too. Well, yeah, but the table isn't the place. Well, I eat on the table. Yeah, I know, but we don't want to eat on the table after you've been on the table. Anyway, that's another story. Let's go on to what is the third thing? Well, Jesus died for me. Yeah, Jesus died for me, and he died for you too. You say, well, I don't know about that. I'm only a few years old. Jesus knew you from the foundation of the world. He is outside of time. Yes, he did know you. He planned your life. He's got a great plan for your life. He loves you. Oh, he loves you. He loved you enough to die for you. And you think, <laughs> Well, he may have died for those people 2,000 years ago. No, he died for you. You were on his mind. Isn't that amazing how much he loves you? And the fourth thing is, I must decide to live for him. Yeah, I live for him. You do? What do you do? Well, I cry. You don't go to church? Hey, I'm a cat. Well, I don't suppose cats go to church. I don't suppose you read the Bible either, do you? Mm, I would if I could. Yeah, we can read the Bible, and I encourage you, read the Bible every day. Get hooked on the book. It's the most important book you'll ever read. And the Bible tells us that his word is alive, so full of power. Amen. Well, I guess it's about time for you to go. You want to say goodbye? Mm, okay. Bye. Okay, let me, put, let me take you, put you down here. All right, we're going to talk about Abraham today. And we're going to talk about a father's sacrifice. And this is a story, if you remember, Abraham uh, wanted a child. And gosh, he was 100 years old when he had Isaac. And Sarah was about 75 or 90 or whatever. She was old, 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 old lady. I can't imagine being that old having children. But anyway, by the time uh, that this chapter, this is 22nd chapter of Genesis, comes around, um, he was probably about 125 years old. And would you believe Isaac was probably about 25? 
And so we see in here, um, sometimes God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he, re yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and do this and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little further. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. So Abraham placed the wood up for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders and while he carried, where he, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to his father and said, Father... <laughs> Yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Good question. Um, you know, I was wondering if he might have thought, Dad, you don't have a beginning of dementia or Alzheimer's, do you? Um, in case you hadn't noticed, um, did you forget something here, like the lamb? And what his father said is, God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. And Abraham answered, Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. I imagine there wasn't a whole lot said at that point, because I'm sure Isaac might have wondered, um, God will provide him a lamb. Uh-huh. Well, I wonder if he's got one tied up somewhere. Somebody's going to meet us with a sheep. Uh wonder what. So anyway, when they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Oh my. I think at this point, Isaac was, he was big enough that he could have stopped his father and said, excuse me, dad, but this is not cool. Um, I'm not a sheep, in case you hadn't noticed. I'm your only son that you waited all these years for, and now you're going to put me on the fire? But he was an obedient son. He, he didn't resist. He darn well could have. Isn't that amazing? He was obedient. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son, as a sacrifice. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thick by his horns in the thicket, and he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his own, his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Hajara, which means Jehovah Jireh, as they say, that the Lord will provide. To this day, people will still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. And so here he is. I'm sure his son was very relieved. I'm sure his heart rate was like <laughs> really going. And he's like, okay. And so he was glad that his dad was really in his right mind. And they had to sacrifice. And the blessing came down. So why do you think God would do that? Well, God wants to know. He wants to bless us with things. But he wants to know that those things don't have us. He wants to know that he matters more than these things. And so... Uh, that's why he tested Abraham. And Abraham, of course, heard his voice and did what was right. And, you know, sometimes you may be asked something. You want something that seems like God gives it to you, and then God asks you to give it up. It's like, uh, like I've known people have building programs, and they just about got the money for it, for 
for the Duke go on and do the down payment or whatever, do a building. And then God tells them to give it to somebody else. And like, <laughs> and God says, well, just give this amount. And it's like, but that's all we have. But that's our God. And then God's then able to bless them with even more. And he is. He's an awesome God. All right. So now we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about bears and penguins. You know, people who believe in evolution, we say no. Because animals really tr are better parents, I think, than a lot of humans. Anyway, here's a mama bear, and she's got cute little cubs there. And, you know, those cubs, she raises them and takes good care of them. And the, the thing is, we need to honor our parents. They gave us life. We need to thank them. We need to thank our Heavenly Father. We need to have an attitude of gratitude. All right. And then you see the penguin. Oh, my, what the penguins do. They must be the greatest parents of all. I mean, they walk about 70 miles. Can you imagine walking 70 miles to get to the place where they nest? And they find and they pair up and then they, they have a, lay an egg and they guard that egg and then the, the female goes off and hunts and the male stays. And he can't drop it on the ground, it'll freeze. He has to keep it kind of tucked up underneath where it's between his feet and then it'll hatch. And I mean, they stand there, you know, thousands of them all gather at the site, and I mean, it's hurricane force winds. It's so cold, and an extremely cold temperature. And they do that all through the winter. And then in the spring, the moms, come, they come back, and the babies are hatched. And they still they can't draw them. I mean, they have to take such good care. It's a full-time, more than full-time job to take care of. And they just have, like, one chick. But they take such good care of it. All right. Now. We're going to go on and we're going to talk here about ears. <laughs> ears, yeah. You know, lots of times kids don't think their parents know what they're talking about, but we do. You need to listen to your parents when they tell you things. They're not trying to ruin your fun. They are trying to help you. And it's real important to pay attention to what they say. So listen to your parents. They were kids too. All right, next. We need to have an attitude of gratitude. God doesn't like murmuring and complaining. And, you know, as a parent, we don't like it either. Our kids are always complaining about everything, griping about this, griping about that. And I've told how my youngest son used to bring me flowers, usually from the neighbor's yards. And, you know, we need to say thank you. We need to say please and thank you. We need to be polite. We don't need to think the world owes us a living and we're entitled to things, because we're not. We weren't entitled to be saved. That was something God gave us. We weren't entitled to any of the things God gives us, our Heavenly Father. It's a blessing of God, and we're blessed to have it, and it is not owed to us. People don't owe us stuff either. You know, there's a lot of stuff right now about all kinds of things that people think people owe them things. And excuse me? No, they don't. God is your source. You need to look to him as your source. He is your only source. And so uh, anyway, main thing is we need to keep him the main thing. We need to keep looking to God. And you know, the Bible talks about, talk about honoring father and mother. And that's one of the commandments, one of the Ten Commandments. When Moses went up on the mountain and he got it from God and God carved him out on the on the tablets, one of them was to honor your father and your mother. And that's why we've been teaching this series on about, about the Ten Commandments and honoring that, because it's very important. And so uh, one of the things we do by honoring them is to be grateful for the things they do for us. Say thank you. You know, if your parents have you in all kinds of sports and activities, they don't have to do that. They don't owe you that. And uh, yeah, parents are supposed to take care of you and provide you with roof and food and clothes and things. But there's a lot of things parents do that they don't have to do. And sometimes it's that great sacrifice. So we need to appreciate when God, when God through the parents, does these things. And we need to appreciate God, too, because you say, well, my parents did that. Yeah, but it was God that told them to do that. It all comes back to him as our Heavenly Father, as our ultimate source for everything. And you know that scripture, that um, that phrase that was with the, 
Abraham and Isaac and Jehovah Jireh, as we say, we always even saw Jehovah God, Jireh, my provider and everything. He is our provider. He is the one, way maker. He is the one who makes things happen. And, you know, when God is for you, who can be against you? There's a lot of bad things going on in the earth today that are not good. But if you trust God, he will take care of you. And so that is good to know, isn't it? So uh, I love our God. I tell you, he's an awesome, awesome God. And so uh, <clears throat> anyway, we have a story, and it's about the commandos. And, of course, this is the Ten Commandments series. And Command Bill is the place where it's um, a place where these stories originate from. And here we have a picture of Commando R. You see, he makes a name R. And he's reading the Times, and it talks about kidnapping at a carnival. Apparently, there were a lot of kidnappings going on, and he was reading about that and very concerned because it wasn't a very big town, and they were having these things happen, and it was really pretty darn scary and so he had warned his son you know he'd said to him I don't mind you going out playing but don't go to the carnival it's dangerous right now there's somebody doing things there there's kids that have been disappearing it's not a good place so anyway the next day Ann and I came over uh, to see C who was his um, our son and said, hey, guess what? We got tickets to the carnival. And she's like, um, I'm not supposed to go. And I said, oh, come on, it'll be fun. We'll go down there. We'll get done. And before you know it, we'll get home. Dad will never know anything. Mom and Dad won't know. We'll just go down there and we'll have fun. You know, what are we going to do around here? We're bored. So they decided, okay, they were going to do it. So anyway, the two boys went on ahead and... Um, See, I thought, I'll slip out the door and I'll go on. Well, here's his parents standing there, and of course his mother, and mothers usually do are sensitive and know, said, you're not going to that carnival, are you? No. Well, you better not go, because they're kidnapping kids. We don't want to hear that you went down to the carnival. He dashes out the door and says, ah, i got to go, I'm late, they're waiting on me. Because he didn't want to lie, but he didn't want to tell him what he was doing either. Because he knew he'd be in trouble. So, you know, it's funny, but your sins will find you out. And when you have praying parents, they will find out about things. You can just mark it down. Because some parents, like me, when I had kids that are smaller, I said, Holy Ghost, please show me what my kids are doing and if they're doing things they shouldn't be. And guess what? He did. And I would see these things. And it would be like, I remember my youngest son saying, Man, I always get caught. He did, too. All right, so here we go. They go down to the ticket booth. And, of course, they see F and M. And F and M are kind of guards, kind of like security. And, unfortunately, um, they knew C's dad. And so here he is at the ticket booth looking at him like, oh, dang. I hope they don't tell my dad or they don't stop me because they knew he wasn't, you know, they might know that. C wasn't supposed to be at the carnival, but he got in. So they went in and they started to enjoy the carnival. They were kind of having fun, kind of doing the kind of things that kids do. When all of a sudden, here comes this guy. He was creepy, and it was like, mm, he had a lot of money in his hand, and, and he was saying, hey, kids, hey, kids, come with me. I got a job for you. I'll make you some money, and then you'll have fun. And you got to let you come back to the carnival and you have all this money. And they were like, uh, no, I don't think so. Well, then the guy was like, when they wouldn't come willingly, it was like he started chasing them and saying, you're going to come with me. And they were running, and they were like scared. They were really scared because they realized this guy was bigger than they were and he was after them. They didn't know if they had any other people that could be coming after them. And it was like, oh, this is not good. So uh, 
They ran and they ran and they barely got away. And they finally found Afanim and they said, hey, there's some, they were just out of breath. They said, there's some guys over there and they, they tried to kidnap us. And they said they had this job for me and they, us and, and they offered us money. And then we didn't want to do it. They chased us. And I think they were going to they're the kidnappers. So anyway, so the security guys, they went and they talked to the police about it. And so then... Um, they were saying, well, show us where you were when you last saw them. So they took them to the spot. And so uh, they looked and looked and, well, they caught the guys. They caught the guys. They were able to, which was good. But then, guess what? <laughs> because it hadn't been safe, they escorted them home to their parents. And C was just in a little bit of trouble, as were the other two, because guess who answered the door but Mother? The same one who said, you're not going to go to the carnival, are you? And here they were. So, your sins will find you out. Anyway, that's not a good way to honor your parents. They disobeyed their parents, and they got in trouble. You know, you don't want to disobey your parents, especially when they give you warnings, because there's reasons. And just because they're older, they probably learn and seen things that you haven't, and they know things that you don't know. And so um, here they were, learning a very valuable lesson. But thank heavens they were safe. God protected them. And sometimes even when we do things we shouldn't, God protects us. If you keep doing things that are wrong, sometimes you come out from under God's protection. But God... He takes care of us, and especially when you have parents that pray for you. That's why we need to honor our father and mother. Sometimes they make great sacrifices for us. All right. Speaking of father, you have a heavenly father, and he's the best dad ever. You can have him as your dad. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all of sin that kind of falls short of the glory of God. Everybody needs a Savior everybody's blown it. You know, some people act like they never do anything wrong. Well, excuse me, everybody does. And so, Bible also says in Romans 6, 23, it talks about, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Do you know there's a real heaven and there's a real hell? And I'm going to ask you this. If you died today, do you know whether you go to heaven or whether you go to hell? You say, hell's a bad word. No, it's a real place. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You say, well, I don't know. I'm a pretty good person. Hey, I'm here to tell you that's not going to get you into heaven. You say, what? No. It's knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior and accepting him as your Lord and Savior. And there's a scripture that says in Romans 10, 9, and 10, and if we'll believe with our heart and say with our mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, we can be saved. And that's what it takes to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you have uh, accepted him and asked him to be your Lord and Savior, whether you feel like it or not, the word says you're saved. It says in Romans 10, 13, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You're whosoever, right? Well, of course you are. So if you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity to do it. Don't put it off. Don't say, well, I'm busy. I'll do it another time. You don't know how long you have. I remember a young man. We were out with this young man, and he was, you know, young. And I thought, oh, he has his whole life ahead of him. And that night he got shot and killed by a bunch of guys that came after him. He was dead. And I mean, he was so young, full of life, and yet in just a few minutes he was gone. So let's say this, and this is what you do. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Jesus, I do believe. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe it with my heart. And I'm saying it with my mouth. So thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Love you, Jesus. Now, as a minister of the gospel, I can tell you that you, you're forgiven. And because of that, you're in right standing with God. You know, people may not forget some of the things you've done. 
but God does. And he doesn't remember. He's not like people. He won't bring it up and say, remember such and such when you did such and such. No, he doesn't do that. And you can imagine yourself giving Jesus a big hug. He is your heavenly father. And like I said, he's the best daddy ever. You cannot have a better father. So now what? You say, now what do I do? Well, get yourself a Bible. I, I happen to like the new living translation for kids. I think it's a real easy Bible to read. It's everyday English. And, you know, it's just a... Get yourself, don't just get it on your phone. Everybody's got phones. Get the book. Get hooked on the book. I mean, when you get on the phone, you don't know to go look in different places for things or looking things up or cross-referencing. But when you have a Bible, you can do that. And so get hooked on the book and read it. And read it every day. And then go to church. You say, well, I don't know. Remember I go to church? Well, if you don't know of a good church, ask some of your friends, the ones that are going. Don't ask the ones that don't want to go to church. Ask the ones that do. And maybe if you don't have a way to get there, they can give you a ride, or maybe the church can give you a ride. But being in church is important because you get a new heart when you accept Jesus, but you got a head that's got all this other stuff in it, and you need to get the word in so you can think right and you can do right. And you can become all that God wants you to be. God's got a great plan for your life. But part of it is reading his word. Sometimes the scripture will jump out at you and you'll go, wow. And it'll be for you. Because this book is alive. He says, the book is alive? Yeah, right. Yeah, it is. It says that in Hebrews 4.12. It talks about how it's quick, powerful. And that word quick means alive. Yeah. You think it's just made out of ink and paper? No. It's God's love letter to you. And you need to get it in and read it and live it and enjoy it. And then you can pray for others. And um, We'd love to hear from you. If you've just accepted Jesus, let us know. There'll be an address at the bottom or a way to contact us. And we'd like to send you a gift. So uh, we'll talk to you next time. We're almost out of time here. But you keep your eyes on Jesus. Now, how do I do that? I can't see. Well, then you read his word. And in your mind, picture him, talk to him, and just enjoy Jesus. He loves you, and we love you. And We'll see you next time because we're out of time.